G'day folks, this lovely wide slow flowing and deep section of water is the far lower reaches of the Ovens River and today I've come down here to drown some bait and do a bit of fishing. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Righto folks, as with most of these types of videos I'm using a Paternoster rig on each rod and because it's closed cod season I'm not using cheese, I'm just using worms on both rods. I probably should have this one on the downstream side because it's got the lighter sinker, but that's okay. A common mistake a lot of people make when they do this sort of fishing is they'll come to a nice spot like this, then they'll cast right across the other side. The only time I ever make those big long casts is when I'm in a river, in a lake I mean, or if I'm in, if there's a reason to cast to the other side, I will. If there's snags over the other side, just recently at uh, Boozy Creek, there's a nice log on the other side of the creek that I cast to, but here, I'm far better off just to fishing close to the bank because that's where the fish are likely to be sitting. Now the reason I've chosen this particular spot is because I'm down the very far bottom reaches of the Ovens River. This part of the river is actually still backed up by water from Lake Mulwala. Now we had a lot of rain over the last few days and they had a power of rain up in the mountains and as a result three of the uh, river gauges on the Ovens River catchment and the upper Ovens River are, uh, are above their minor flood level so there's a lot of water coming down and I suspect that over the next three or four days this also will go to minor flood which will put water up over those uh, those flats up there and flood those red gums and there'll be water where I'm sitting now. So it normally takes a few days to get down this far so that's why I've come down here just to stay a couple of steps ahead of the dirty water and the high water that's coming down. Whoa, 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 getting a bite, he's on there, he's on there. Oh, he's on a snag, no he's off the snag. Please be a nice yellow belly, oh he's coming under a snag. He's wrapped around a snag, he's still kicking. I can feel him kicking. Come on, that's not fair. He wants to swim away, but he's wrapped around a snag. I think he's off. No, he's not. <laughs> yes, he is. What's he doing? This is a heavy fish. I don't want to lose him. He's still on there. I can feel him. Maybe if I just stand here, I've got to watch his other rod. But maybe if I just stand here and hold him, eventually he'll swim out of that snag. He's wrapped around something. This is one of the most frustrating things that can happen when you're a fisherman. I'll give him a little bit of slack and see if he can sort of swim away from that snag. I'm hoping he swims away and I'm hoping there's a nice yellow belly. I'll try and reel him in now and see what happens. He's still there though, I can feel him. There he goes, look he's lunging. Oh, what a bugger. It's time's like now, is he, is he free, is he free? He's way down there. He must be wrapped under a log because the line's down here. The line's down here but the fish is up there. He's under something. I don't think I'm going to lose this fish. Hope he, hopefully he does that again so I can get another visual. The fact that he come to the surface tells me that he might be a carp. I'm actually giving him slack now. You don't like to give fish slack because when you give fish slack quite often the hook falls out. But I'm, I've had a lot of tension on him so it might stay in. But I'm giving him slack in the hope that he swims away from that snag. I can't feel him, I think he's gone. I'm going to have to break the line. I think he's gone. It'd be good if it didn't break. Oh, it's coming in. If it didn't break, it's, I can feel the line moving through snags or something. I'm only using six pound lines. I've got to be a bit careful here. It's actually, the fish is still on there, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Tense times. The whole snag's coming up, I think. Hopefully with the fish still on it. I just want to get a visual. That's the main thing. I just want to be able to see what I hooked. I don't know whether the fish is still there or not. I think... Ah, oh, snap. Folks, we will never ever know. Oh, look at the big swirl just there. He was still on it. And I almost got him to the surface. You know what? I don't care when I lose fish. But that really is heartbreaking. That I do care about because it leaves me wondering. Even if I saw it and it was a big fat yellow belly or a big fat cod, I wouldn't care. But the fact that I never got to see it breaks my heart. <laughs> but I wouldn't go fishing if I was going to get too upset all the time. So all I've got to do is uh, re-rig, throw it back in and try again. I just had a little nibble on that rod there. Just while I'm putting this one back in. I am absolutely devo at the moment. <laughs> totally devastated. Now because I didn't get to see that fish, 
I'm calling it as a 70 centimeter yellow belly. It was a 70 centimeter yellow belly. Ha! <laughs> nah, seriously, I reckon it was a carp. It bit a lot like a carp. And it didn't feel like a carp but it was fighting because it was pulling straight down. But that's most likely because a line was going under a branch or something down there and the fish come to the surface up there, which is a very carpy thing to do. I'm guessing it was maybe a 50 centimeter carp. It didn't feel like an absolute monster fish, but there was a bit of weight to it. I reckon it was about a two or three pound carp. That's my guess. Oh, getting a bit of a bite here. That wasn't a bad looking little bite either. It's still there. Still playing with it. Got him! Yes! It's only a small bite. Very carpy looking bite. It hasn't come out and gone to the surface like carp do yet though. But it, oh, I reckon it's a carp. Yeah, it's a carp. I wonder if this is this. Didn't I say the fish I lost before? I reckon it was maybe a 50 centimetre carp. Well, I reckon that's what this is. If you don't mind, I'm just trying to film. Keep it down a bit. And don't shit on me. Now, before when I lost that fish on there, my guess was a 50 centimetre carp. And now I've caught about a 50 centimetre carp. <laughs> I wonder if it's the same fish. I reckon it's something similar. Anyway, I'll grab my net. And I'll work out how I'm going to land him. Oh, the net should be long enough. I can get down a bit lower here. Beautiful. Come on, a carpy. The first carp in my new net. <sighs> Let's get a measurement. Shit, this other one's getting a bite here now too, look. Getting a double bite. Got him. Oh no, it's another carp I'm pretty sure. This one's not even put out of its misery yet. Brother, you're not going to see... Oh, no, no, go back in the drink. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're not going to see this bit. Right. Now that carp that you, that you just didn't see has given him quite a bit of a headache. Now. Sorry if that's a bit gross. But I reckon this one's a bit bigger. Well, it's way out there in the middle of the river. Two at once. I've said here for an hour. I've lost that one before. And now I've hooked two fish in the space of about five minutes. I don't normally show the dead fish because YouTube can deem that to be insensitive content or graphic content which can lead to the demonetization of my videos. But Paul G the other day miscon misconstrued something that I said. I said I just want to get this back in the water and I was talking about my fishing rod but Paul thought I was talking about the carp. I said, well, they did go back, but they weren't feeling very well, and now they're en route to Lake Mulwala. There you go. I haven't even fit a bigger one. I didn't actually get a measurement of that carp because this one bit too soon. Isn't it funny? I sat here for an hour and hardly had a bite. So I, uh, so I reeled them both in and checked the bait and cast them back out, and then within five minutes of them both being back in the water, hooked up on both rods. Look at that. Two carp in the one scene, if I can get him up to the surface. One's feeling healthier than the other. There you are. Two carp in the one scene. One's scared, one's dead. Come on fish. If you happen to be watching from England, please don't give me a lecture. Or anywhere else in the world that worships carp. We're not allowed to put them back. This is Australia. Where carp aren't respected like they are in other parts of the world. Right now, where's my wet net? I say wet because it was literally used only two minutes ago. Ugh. Been catching a lot of carp in the Ovens River lately. A lot more than normal. I'm going to check that I'm filming because I uh, hate it when I think I'm filming and I'm not. Ah yes, I'm filming. I caught a little trout the other day that jumped out of the water about eight or nine times. I went mean, splash, 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 splash. Then I spoke about it and everything about it. Then I pushed stop and all I did was start filming. 
not cool. This isn't the biggest carp that I've caught, but he's still quite a big fish. I got that 78 centimetre last week, which was equal to my biggest ever, which is 78 centimetres. I reckon this one's probably in the low 60s. Just they go hard, don't they? Here we go, here we go, it's the inside out. Uh, not quite ready yet, but he's getting close. You've got to tire them out, you can't just net fish. Whether it's a carp or any species of fish, you can't chase them with the net. You've got to tire them out enough so that you can just slowly just lower them, like drag them over the top of the net and then scoop them up. And never, ever, ever net a fish tail first because that's when you lose them. I've seen so many fish lost at the net because someone's chased them from behind. Tell you what folks, when someone's chasing me, I don't run backwards. And when someone's chasing me, I don't run forwards either, just quietly. I'm too overweight, come on. Tape measure still in my pocket from the last fish. Might be able to get down a bit lower up here actually. Down here. Might make it a bit easier. I can get a bit closer to the water here. This is the sort of spot that I really can't afford to fall in. Because if I do, I can't get out. Oh, he's wearing out now. We've got a bit of tiredness. Here he goes. Lure, lower him into the, lure him into the net and scoop him up. That's a big fat carp. That weighs a lot. Let's get a little measurement. It's not going to be 100% accurate because it's on a bit of an angle. But it'll give me an idea. 63 centimetres. 63 cm's. That goes back to the back tail. 65 if I measure at the top. So we'll get an average. 63 at the bottom, 65 at the top. That's averaging out 65, uh, 64 centimetres. 64 very fat centimetres. Oh, now after all that commotion, it's time to put both lines back in. Isn't it amazing? So I'll just honestly just put them both out to check the bait and just put them back in and within five minutes it'll hook two fish. I am actually hoping to catch a nice yellow belly down here today. Carp are fun and they keep me entertained while I'm waiting. There's not a lot of yellow belly in the ovens, but there are a few and the numbers are increasing thanks to Victorian Fisheries Authority putting them in. And I'll warn you now, if I catch a nice yellow belly between that 35 to 50 centimetres, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to kill it dead, and I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to fill it, and I'm going to eat it. And if I catch two, I'll keep them both. I'll give one to my mum and dad. They'll fill it, they'll cook it, they'll eat it. Stop talking, Robbie. You talk too much. I took my dog for a walk down at the park the other day and I kept getting attacked by ducks. I knew I shouldn't have bought a purebred dog. <laughs> Big shout out to Captain Franco1. Captain Franco1 watches my videos and he always makes me laugh with his comments. People say to me that I make them laugh with my videos. Well, Captain Franco1 makes me laugh with his comments and he said that joke. The ducks were attacking his dog because it was, an, it was a purebred. <laughs> Here we go. It's a carpy looking bite if I ever saw one. See that real slow little dangle? That, that's usually a carp bite. And then once they realise they're hooked, they often go nuts. This is only a little one. Hey, who knows? Have I got a yellow belly? No, nah, I've got a carp. Oh. Yep, it's a carp. As I was saying, quite often they'll do that real small little bite. And if you're not paying attention, you won't see it. But once they realise they're hooked, that's when they just start going nuts and pull your fishing right in the water. But usually, a lot of the time they start with that real little, little bite. 
that real little nibble. <laughs> right. Oi! Where's the net? This carp's quite dark in colour. Not fine as well as the others. He's not six. He's bigger than the first one, smaller than the second one, and I've got no way of knowing where he sits in comparison with the one that I lost because I didn't get the visual. All right, mate. Into the net. Into the net. Nice and quickly. Nice and quickly. Oh, look at that. The show's over. The show's over in less than a minute. He's a very interesting colour. Very dark. Let's get a measurement. I honestly can't believe how many of these I'm catching in the Ovens River at the moment. It's unnatural. Yeah, 60. 62. 62 centimetres. 62 centimetres. Quite fat. Very dark in colour. But you're as black as the inside of a bloody a black cat's guts at midnight. On a foggy night. In a town with no street lights. And you're tangled. Right, I'll get this uh, hook out of his mouth. No, 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 you got off, you got off, you got off. Right now, folks, uh, this cat said to say goodbye, go on. Right, I'm still using the Jan Jack worms, do they go well, these things? <laughs> Can't believe I haven't caught a cod. This time of year, it's actually quite easy to catch a cod in the Ovens River. But my last couple, I got one little trout caught at the end of that epic carp session last week. Other than that, whoa, 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 fish on the other rod. Because other than that, I haven't caught a cod this spring. That might change, this is fighting very cod like. Just in the middle of saying I haven't caught a cod this spring, and look at that, I've just caught one. Just while I was saying I can't believe I haven't caught a cod, I've caught six, seven, eight, nine carp. To one cod. Now that's unusual. The Ovens River is usually quite easy to catch a Murray cod in the close season. Where's my net? I'm not going to worry about a photo at this point. Normally I don't even lift them out of the water in the closed season. I'm happy to just release them in the water, but I sort of I can't get to the water to do it. So if I get down there, I can't get back out. Mate, thanks for coming along and just about pulling my fishing rod in the river. They're usually pretty easy to unhook the old Murray cod. There we go, folks. Lovely little Murray cod of around 40 centimetres, give or take a couple of centimetres. See ya, buddy. How ironic that he came along just as I was talking about how unusual it is that I haven't caught any cod. But it's true. I caught six carp and one little trout cut about that long in a recent trip. Today I've caught three carp, and it's usually this time of year you pick up a few cod. You don't want to catch them because it's closed season, I don't target them and by catching little cod like that it's okay because they're not spawning anyway but it's unusual to not pick up a few more little ones as a bycatch. Here we go, that's a nice bite. That's a carpy bite, but it's a nice carpy bite. Come on, take it. That's not actually an overly carpy bite, that one. I wonder if it's a small yellow belly. Whatever it is, it's still there. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Got him, I think. No, very small fish, whatever this is. Totally, is it a little yellow belly? It is a tiny weeny Murray cod and he swallowed the hook, which is unusual for little cod. Normally cod get lip hooked. How deep down is it, buddy? I'll bite that off. I'll bite that off. Very small little Murray cod. Isn't that just absolutely fantastic to see? That cod is going to benefit from the flood water that's coming down through here over the weekend. He will benefit immensely. I know I've lost count of how many fish I've caught, is it three carp and two cod plus one lost fish at the start, I think. Starting to feel better about that now, I'm just coming to terms with losing that first fish. I'm at peace. I've let it go. <laughs> getting a nibble here, getting a nibble, getting a decent old bite. There we go, he's still there. Looked very carpy. Oh, I'm getting a bite on that one too. Both rods are going at once. This is a better one. Fish glory today. Got him. That's now it's looking super carpy. Straight out of the middle and straight up to the top. 
That's a calf hookup if I ever saw one. Right, I'm just gonna keep my eye on this other rod here because it too was getting a bite and I could find myself with a double hook up here. It's a big splash. I'm really not taking my eyes off this other rod here. My God, it's just fish after fish. This is insane fishing. A bit of weight in this one. Might have another 60 plus. I wonder if it's because we had that flood back in autumn that it's just pushed a lot of carp out of the lagoons and into the river. Carp really are the hardest fighting fish we've got here. They just go nuts. It was a dark colour like the last one. The is long though, I think this one's longer. What's this other rod doing? In a recent trout fishing video, I mentioned video lengths, how some are long and some are short, and they are what they are. And this one's gonna be long because I've had lots of action. The more action I get, the longer the video is. I've got to tell you though, it is very, very comforting for me when people ask me to make longer videos because that tells me that people are enjoying what I'm producing. And that makes me very, very happy. I don't think he's going to be 60 this one. He's not as big as the big one I got earlier. The 64. Still a fair old fish though. It's funny how some have a lot more energy than others. This is insane fishing. Insane carp fishing at least anyway. There we go folks. Tell you what, it's quicker to land them in this new net than it is in that other little net that I usually use. That's got a longer handle though. Let's get a measurement. Alright folks, now I didn't get a photo or a video or a measurement of that fish and let me tell you why. I netted it, I got it up here, I put it on the ground to measure it and it flipped and flipped and flipped and I got my foot and said no 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 and it flipped down to here and I came down here and I went no 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 I was trying to stop it and it flipped back in the water there. So folks, that one was caught and released. Don't hate me. But you know what? There was no more released than the first one that I lost. I lost him out of there. The only difference is I lost this one once it was on the bank. I lost that one in the water. If I didn't come fishing today, that fish wouldn't have got taken out of the water anyway. But I did have an opportunity to remove it from the system and I failed miserably. Oh God, I'm getting another carpy looking bite. The line's only been back in about bloody two minutes. Surely not another one. The fishing's off its dial down here at the moment. I'm on again. Maybe it's the one I just accidentally kicked back into the river. This rod's going nuts because I think I've tangled the two of them together. That's not cool. I've got to be careful here because this, is it gone under or is it tangled with it? What if I just go under there? Will that untangle it or make it worse? What has it done? Oh, I'm in a hell of a mess. I wonder if this is the one that I just accidentally kicked back into the river. Can't believe how many carp I'm catching at the moment. What have I done with this other line though? Oh dear. I need to know what I've done with this other line here. I can see it, it's just out there. Do I just need these? Is it just a case of going under? I wonder if it's, I reckon it is, you know. I'm gonna just go over there and hope for the best. I wonder if this is the one that I accidentally just kicked back in. Certainly has a similar fight, although you think that one would be a bit tired now. They all go straight down there under that tree. Look how this rod wouldn't have been in two minutes. I literally just put this back in. Someone asked the other day, why do I use such light gear for carp fishing? Well, I'm actually hoping to catch a yellow belly. But I do prefer to fish with light gear anyway. It's easier to detect the bites. This definitely isn't the one that I just kicked back in. That was quite a dark fish. This is a very silver fish. 
This one's going to the no kick zone. This is nuts. Can't believe how many fish I'm catching, particularly carp. There's always been carp in the river, and as a kid we used to catch heaps, but this year, this spring, like right now, there seems to be more than normal. It's a pity the yellow belly or red fin or something wouldn't just show up. <laughs> Peaking numbers like that from time to time without any known reason. Got him! Right. Similar size to the last one, but not half as dark. <sighs> Let's see if I can manage this one a bit better than I did the last one. <laughs> I might keep... Oh, no, 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 shit. I was going to say, oh, no, he now he's wrapped around something. Oh, no. I'm having a hell of a mess. He's still on there. But he's fallen back in the river and wrapped himself around this root. I'm going to get him. Don't let me lose another one, similar way to what I did the last one. How am I going to get around that root? Let me see if I go right down. Oh, no. Oh dear, I need to get rid of this little root here. Does that help? <laughs> I'm gonna have a mess. I break the line on everything here, but I've got the fish again. Right, oh, I didn't break the line either, beauty. Right, I had a near carp relief experience. Look at the, uh, the red on him. Some kind of rash, yuck. Looks even more disgusting than normal. Where's that hook, mister? No, 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 no. No. Give me tape measure now. No, 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 no. No. That is truly disgusting, that red yucky stuff. 64 again. No, 63. 63 centimetres. 63 centimetres of near SKP carp. You're not going to escape now, mate. You're in trouble. Noisy bastards. I could hear a koala grunting in the trees on the other side of the river before, which is always a welcome sound, but they've drowned him out. Anyway, folks, I'm about to pack up. I hope you've liked this video. If you have, why not give me a thumbs up? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and then hopefully I'll see you on my next fishing adventure.